Hi everyone, welcome to this webinar hosted by Rockflow Dynamics. Thank you for joining us today. It's Ran here from RFD's Aberdeen office and today I'm hosting this session with my colleagues Oksana, who's sitting in Stavanger, and Alexi, who's here with me in Aberdeen. So this is the first installment of our four-part webinar series, Unlocking Reservoir Potential with T-Navigator. So the programme's been devised to give you an overview of the features and workflows within our technology from geoscience to production engineering. Um, of course, if you've got any further questions after watching any of the webinars, don't hesitate to reach out to us um, and we can share more information, tutorials um, and examples of how our users have been um, utilising the workflows that we demonstrate. Today, Oksana and Alexis' presentation, Integrated Asset Modelling for Enhanced Operational Performance, will show you how you can improve efficiency and better understand the risks in IAM um, with the ability to integrate data, workflows and models across the, the disciplines. We'll have a few slides and then we'll move on to a live demo in T-Navigator. Everyone in the webinar has been automatically muted um, when you join, just because we've got quite a lot of participants on. Uh, so if you would like to ask a question, just type it into the chat box on your screen and we'll answer as many as we can at the end. If we don't have time to answer your question live, we will make sure we follow up with you um, on email as well. We are recording the session and we'll upload it to our YouTube channel later today as well, if you would like to rewatch any of it. So now I'll hand over to Oksana to begin and we'll be back for the questions at the end. Thanks, Oksana. Thanks, John. Uh, hello, everyone. So my name is Oksana. I'm a resident engineer based in Stavanger. And let's walk through our integrated modeling possibilities. So now you can see the common workflow usually company use. As you know, all domains are working separately in different applications. So when you want to create the smooth workflow, you need to do a lot of import, export. So when acquiring a new data for the model, uh, you are quite, um, it's, it's quite hard to work, uh, to go back and to update the model, or you want to, if you want to explore the new possibilities, the new scenarios, it's also, uh, quite um, hard. So how we can help uh, in T-Navigator? We can take one step further. We can uh, take into account the uncertainties from the geology side, from the dynamic simulation side, networking. And uh, you can add as many variables as possible and create and build an ensemble to explore the whole, uh, the big field of different scenarios and variants. In T-Navigator, we have everything to do the integrated asset modeling. You can do the uh, surface facilities, you can model your wells, you can create your PVT model and use it throughout the whole integrated project. You can do the reservoir coupling and in the new model, we have a material balance where you can create a simple model to change, uh, to have your the full model of reservoir or the simplified model for your history matching and for understanding of your project better. As we have a Python embedded, we have a nice workflows to optimize your work, um, to do the project migration easier and um, create loops and nice workflows, which you can also share with your colleagues. So key points of this integrated asset modeling would be the joint system of equation describes physical processes inside the reservoir. Um, pressure and temperature is taken into account along the well bore and in the network facilities. As your well is connected to the reservoir, you have information um, regarding fluid flow at each time step. Your surface network elements controlling your fluids and production. You have your PVT model, which you have to create once and you can use throughout the project. And all these PVT wells and surface models are all in one place. So you can do like history matching or for a custom project. So here the uh, usual workflow you would like to, you would have to do. 
you create your PVT model, we can do the compositional or black oil model. Um, we have some special functions as uh, composition uh, EOS blending, uh, black oil delumping. So you create your PVT and you use it in subsurface and in surface and in your well. Then you create your well models in our well designer. You can have models or only VFP tables. In uh, well designer, you can load trajectories, create completion, do VFP matching, IPR data, create your schedule and so on. Then you can create your surface facilities on the top, such as uh, you can set separator pressure, have different constraints uh, from the network, have chokes, pipelines, create um, to the flow assurance. And as you have uh, your subsurface model, it can be one reservoir or it can be more, like two or more. And as I said before, you can even have the material balance model here coupled with your uh, other elements. And then uh, on the whole, this uh, project, you can do forecasting and optimization. Uh, to understand better how it works, um, I will go through some steps. So you start, the best is to start from model designer, because here you can see uh, all these parts and you can load your existing subsurface model or you create it from the scratch and you can run it. Then you call for well designer from model designer to create your well projects. Then you call for network designer to create a network. And then the, the, that's how you create your integrated project. And then you can uh, calculate the forecast for the whole integrated project. So shortly about model designer, it's our preprocessor where you can just run your models, your um, models from different softwares, uh, or you can create it from the scratch. Uh, also, you can edit properties, you can rebuild your grid, you can um, uh, create different strategies and compare them in one window. You can do PVT modeling and relative permeability modeling. We have also coupled geomechanics, uh, which is quite popular now with, um, regarding the CCA projects. Uh, and also it takes into account when we model the fracture propagation in model designer. And also we have embedded Python, which gives you huge flexibility to create something unique and something that we probably don't have yet. Um, you can do with the help of Python. You don't have to be Python guru. We will help you to create the workflows. So um, it's quite easy to use. And here you can see the project manager um, to show you how everything is connected. So on the left hand side, you can see your cases. You can have as much as, as many cases as you want. And on the right hand side, you can choose which projects you want to use for this specific case from the network projects, PVT projects, well projects. So it's very easy to switch between. So you can, for example, have one well and different completions uh, in the well designer and run different cases and compare them in one window on the graphs. So um, regarding the well designer, you can create uh, well designed from the model designer and then all the trajectories, perforations you have in model designer will be automatically loaded to well designed projects. Or you can create uh, well design from the scratch separately and then you, you load, for example, trajectory manually. And then you can connect at any second, you can connect to model designer if you want. So shortly about the key functionality of well designer, uh, we can, um, so the well is connected to the grid, we can do perforations or open hole, we can do performance modeling and analysis, um, data QC matching to existing data, VFP calculations. You can create different completions, um, also smart completions with um, different types of inflow control devices. You can add artificial lift and all this will be integrated with your reservoir and with your surface network. 
and here examples of some objects we have in well designer so uh, you can see the list of them uh, different um, type of valves um, gas lift gorge element um, different elements and we also have a catalogs for casing and tubing which helps you to 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 optimize your work and uh, not to look for some specific um, parameters and then we work a lot on the visualization so in the well designer as the well project is connected to your subsurface model you can visualize for example logs um, you can see here permeability log so you can optimize your uh, inflow control devices location for example uh, accordingly to the reservoir properties this um, this uh, completion can be uh, um, created manually or you can use the Python workflows to, to do it quicker. And uh, we do the well segmentation and you can analyze um, how every segment works. So if we go back to model designer, as it's all connected, we can visualize also well completion in the subsurface model on the well section on the left hand side. You can see I vis visualize the construction, I have a permeability on the track uh, on the right hand side, and I also added production by connections. So I have oil right now by connections. And I even can put the grid scale on the top so, so you can actually see which cell works in which interval. And on the right hand side, uh, you can see the visualization of graphs. Um, you can um, take a look at any of your segments. Um, uh, usually it's with uh, inflow control devices. You want to understand how the interval works. So this visualization, visualization tools help you to allocate completion elements in accordance with properties along the well board. And as we have our uncertainty quantification tool also integrated, we can do different workflows for optimization of your work. So in this case, here's example of your best um, completion creation. So you have your dynamic model, you create a workflow with uh, completion creation, and you can run hundreds of cases um, to get a dynamic model and the well model to optimize your well completion using our different algorithms. So uh, you can also have your network uh, on the top which also can be created from the model designer uh, or you can create it manually and then synchronize your steps with the subsurface model. Uh, regarding network, Alexi will be talking more uh, while showing demo. And uh, one more feature, the last one I wanted to talk um, as uh, we can do the coupling for our integrated model. So it, it becomes very popular in Norway when you have um, different reservoirs connected to one network uh, offshore. So um, we can do the fully implicit reservoir coupling. Uh, we can do black oil and compositional model combination and you can visualize um, those reservoirs uh, in one window. Uh, you can use the Python workflows to uh, create this uh, optimization strategy, controls, and create your history matching and forecasting projects. So as I said at the beginning, uh, now we have a lot of challenges while working in different uh, applications and T-Navigator helps us to solve a lot of these problems as we have one engineering environment as like me, like a uh, Rezo engineer and Alexi, for example, he's production engineer. We are working in the same windows in the same, with the same project. Um, as we have the whole system, we do, we can do the trans transparent matching and QC process um, by looking simultaneously what's, what's happening on the network and in the subsurface level. The, pr the project is easy to update using our Python embedded and we have also multi-editing tool 
So at any second, you can update any part of your workflow and work further with your project. And we have user-friendly results visualization, which of course helps you to analyze what you received and to take a decision. And uh, at this moment, I want to give floor to Alexi. He will show us a demo with a real integrated project. Alexi, please. Um, hi everyone. So let me just share my screen first. Um, let me just minimize it first and go back to my screen. Okay, um, Aksana, thank you for, for the beginning. So uh, I would like to continue with the, with, the, with the demo project we have. So and basically, as we already mentioned, so we have, um, we usually work together with the REs and petroleum engineers to run the forecast and do some kind of um, uh, production optimization and calculate the optimal forecast scenario, the optimal field development strategy. So, and ideally to have an environment where we can both work together and also having a, a geo on the background. So basically when we do integrated asset modeling, we are talking about reservoir models connected to the wells and to the surface facility. So if you have a look on, on the left-hand side, so I have a reservoir model here, which is um, pretty simplified, So, but uh, basically I will show you some workflows that we have. So working in GNAP, so we have an access to your static and dynamic uncertainties, uh, talking about res reservoir model. And also on top of that, if you go on, if you have a look on the right-hand side, so we have an access to all the elements related to more engineering stuff. So we have the network model here and you can simply have a look and we have a network model connected to the wells and the pipeline system connected to the separator. But the thing is, so um, you also have a different elements in your in your project. So and the, because we usually do a lot of uh, testing um, sensitivity analysis, et cetera. So it's quite handy to have a different realizations of your wells PVT into one place and also for the network too. So basically if I have a look on the right hands on the top side, so I have an access to well project. So, and I have the, all of the data needed here to create the project from scratch or import the project from, from third party applications, which is we also can do. So basically you have an access to well project, as Aksana mentioned, and you can do the, the, the well project from scratch again. You can do the matching procedure uh, using your well test data and you can calculate the VFP curve. So you can visualize the VFP model. And in that case, you don't really need to, to convert it into the table. So you can keep it as a, you can keep it as a, as a, as a model. And also you might have um, different VFP models and you can calculate IPR model afterwards. So basically in, in the network model, we support both options. So you can run the model connected with the simulator. And in that case, reservoir performance will be characterized based on what we have in, in, in the grid cells. But you can also keep um, a simplified network model with the VLP and IPR models if necessarily. We call it as a standalone. And in that case, you, you should have VLP and IPR models connected to the network and it helps you to understand how the well performs today. So, but ideally we are trying to move to the long-term forecasting and run like different realizations of the of uh, field development strategies. So you can keep both um, system here. You can both production and water injection system to identify what is the best way to, to handle your reservoir. And also if we have a look on the right hand side, we already mentioned about PVT. So PVT um, is crucial from, for many of the projects. So again, so it is quite handy to have a PVT in place and it helps you to understand what kind of uncertainties you have in your fluid models. So we do both compositional and block well models. So we do uh, compositional blending in the network. And I've seen, I've seen one question in the, in the chat, so I'll cover it afterwards. So, but basically 
So we do the EOS blending in the network model and you can use different compositional models and calculate the mixture properties in the network model as well. So, but the main idea, so to provide the flexibility to engineers to have an easy access to all the models they have, to all aspects in your project, starting from your static and dynamic up to wells. And so basically, we have a proper integration between our reservoir model, between the subsurface and the surface. So if we have a look on the, on, on, on the screen, so we have the perforations created in the well design. So, and basically, this is how the model runs the forecast. So we have the grid model, but we have a reservoir model with the grid blocks connected to the well project, and depending how the perforation is located, so it, it, can, it generates the connection between, between the subsurface so, and surface part. So if I go back to my model designer project, so we have an option to visualize lower completion here. And basically, if I, oops, sorry, if I do any changes in my completion in the well, so you will be automatically see that the model updated here. So which is provides you a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, QC the project for the history matching and also for the forecasting. Because you have an easy access to all parameters calculated from your subsurface model, such as pressure, saturations, uh, permeability, etc. And you can visualize them both. So basically, your this is the proper integration between the subsurface and the surface side. So you have an easy access to all of the elements, and it provides for you more understanding how the reservoir performs and how the well performs. So going to the network, so I've already run the model and you can visualize some results here. And you will be able to see what we call bubble maps. So we have a fixed pressure on our separator here, which is 10 bars. And we have this network model with a few wells controlled by individual constraints. So basically we chalked our wells to respect the limitations that we have. And in that case, so basically we control our reservoir model to respect the, the all limits that we have on the surface side. The same for the water injection. So we usually limit it by the by compass water on gas injection. So basically I'm talking about the reservoir maintenance, reservoir pressure maintenance system. So again, we limit it usually on the surface side. So we have a limitations of on our compressors on pumps. So basically you can do the same here. You can specify the maximum pressure that you have on your compressor on the pump explicitly, or you can create generate the model of the pump, pump or compressor. And in that in that case, so you will be able to handle you will be you will have more understanding how much capacity you have to reinject your fluids back and again so to run the optimal strategy. So again so the key message from us so it we have an in this generates the like a unique environment for engineers from the different domains again so we usually started with it with the static models and moving to dynamic model here and on top of that you have an access to all engineering domains such as wells surface facilities um, and pvt so if you want to do um, more customized logic and so we have a python objects here and we have a several examples when we've used the python to control production rates to 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 specify water injection system based on how much water we, we do and and basically the main idea again just to minimize uncertainty we have and to help the engineers to to reduce uh, capital and operating expenditure in general um i think that that's all from my side so if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer thanks alexi I forgot to put your camera on. Um, okay, let's see if we have some questions. I think, I don't know if you can have answered it or not, but I'll just repeat the question that came in. Um, so it said, in case we have multiple reservoir models, let's say three coupled models, first is a black oil, second compositional with seven components, and third with 12 components. Component names and properties are different, and these three models produced to the same separator facility. So how does T-Navigator handle this from a PVT point of view? 
yeah, from yeah, that's a good question. So I've tried to to mention it briefly during my presentation. So yeah, we handle we, we can handle different uh, different compositional models in Tina Navigator. So basically, you can keep them in in starting from the SAP software side up to the network. So basically, um, the properties of the mixture will be calculated based on uh, based on fractions based on fractions of components. So if we have uh, different wells connected to the same manifold, depending on how much we produce from each of the well, the properties of the mixture will be calculated because we have a different fractions of the different components. Um, we can't, for now, we can't blend plug oil and, com and compositional for, in the same network. So because it should be the same PVT model on the background. Uh, but again, so we have, it is pretty straightforward to migrate the model into plug oil or, or compositional one. Yeah, so we basically can handle it. If you need uh, any more details, so we can just we can clarify it. Cool, sounds good. Um, maybe a question for Oksana. So um, one of the participants is asking if you can use uh, GPU for the calculations as well. Um, yes, thanks, uh, John. So T Navigator is built to use uh, CPU and GPU approach. So we parallelize our calculations on CPUs and GPUs. And uh, for example, linear, linear sol solver goes to GPUs, which helps you to speed up your model quite significantly. So of course, in this um, integrated project, we, we, will, we will use GPU to speed it up. Cool, thank you. Um, have another question here. Not sure which one of you wants to answer. Uh, it says, can you use lookup tables, uh, for example, coming from decline curve analysis beyond material balance and gridded reservoir in integrated asset modeling? Um, yeah, so we have a workaround for that. So we can uh, specify so the lookup table in the, in the schedule in Network Designer. So it is doable. So yeah, so and we can keep it both uh, basically MBA model, material-based model, and uh, different realizations of your net, of your of your reservoir parameters. So depend depends on uh, depends on what is the objective and what kind of data you have. If you don't have the reservoir model, you have only results. So we have an option to do to use that as an input data for for the network objects, and obviously material balance model and that importance too. Thanks. Hopefully that answers your question, but of course, if there's any um, follow-up, then just reach out to us. Um, okay, let's do a couple more questions. Uh, we've got a question about importing um, third-party models in and how you can do this. Maybe Alexia or Oksana? Yeah, so um, so we, we can do import of the project from third-party applications. So we can do it for the well projects. And also we have uh, internal workflows that can be used to migrate the, the third-party application projects into Tina. Yeah, like regarding subsurface, we read uh, directly a lot of um, uh, formats, uh, industry standard formats. You can just uh, load it and run. Thanks. And um, one. Can this technology represent a digital twin slash digital oil field? We, we've already started that. So this is kind of like a new functionality for us, but we have some examples when we um, started to have some kind of digital visualizations on, on the model. So yes, it is doable. So, and we, we are on the way to make it more efficient. Yeah. Cool. Um, maybe do one more audience question, see how we are for time. Um, is the schedule set with integrated model similar as the reservoir simulation? Yes. So yes. <laughs> Go ahead. So, uh, yeah, so it, it is synchronized. So basically, if you have your um, this is what we usually do. If you have your history match and you move to the forecast, so we can easily synchronize the schedule between your dynamic model and uh, wells and network, which is quite handy. So if you want to do like a history matching and you want to mimic any changes like the workover, etc., so you can just synchronize it with the well. Uh, for the forecast, 
again it is synchronized so if you want to make any changes in your surface facilities um, uh, well models so you can just uh, do it any changes and uh, the well like the first well model will be recalculated based on the new input data Cool, thank you. Um, I think we've got one more time for one more question. Um, someone's asking a little bit more about history matching processes in um, T Navigator, so how it kind of works with uncertainty analysis, ensemble processes. Can you see the question? Yes, we can see the question. Um, big loop ensemble processes come and so on. Yes, as we have this uncertainty quantification tool, we call it AHM, Assisted History Matching. We have different uh, algorithms available, which helps you to run your sensitivity on your variables. And as we have the integration, we can have variables from any of the mains, like start, uh, starting from static model, adding on the top, uh, like dynamic model, properties even like uh, well um, the characterization and network uh, so we can have this uh, this big loop um, on running sensitivity on variables and creating the forecasts uh, building ensembles um, yes so we all these we have in the navigator thanks Oksana Okay, I think that's all the questions we have for now. But if there is any um, questions that you have still to add, um, pop them in the chat and then we'll definitely follow up with you. And if you think of anything after, you can reach out to us as well. So thank you so much, Alexi and Oksana, for preparing today's presentation. The next session um, in this webinar series is this Thursday, so that's the 14th of March, um, exact same time, so it's 10 a.m. if you're in the UK. Um, and Thursday's presentation will be using advancements in geomechanics for optimised hydraulic fracturing, fracture modelling. Sorry, and that will be presented by my colleagues Maria and Tibor. So we hope that we'll see you then. And thank you so much for your attention and for joining us today and for your great questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.